Now, if you're learning Japanese and you're still a relative beginner, I know what you're thinking. How on earth can I start reading with all that kanji that I don't know? Well, I used to think that way too, but I eventually realized that it's by reading that you actually learn all that kanji. Now, that might sound counterintuitive, but whether or not you believe me, believe this. Reading is the key to unlocking Japanese. And I've chosen seven books of very different types that are beginner friendly, meaning that you can start to read in Japanese even if you don't feel ready. And here is a starter for 10. How about this? Bruce, <laughs> Die Hard 4. Die Hard or Yonk. This is the a screenplay book. Now, I bet you weren't expecting this as your first ever Japanese book. Of course you weren't. But look, screenplay books are a great way to get into reading Japanese because what they do is they take films or, or TV series or something like that, and then they give you the script inside in usually uh, Japanese, but also in this case, Japanese and English. Now, I'm not a huge fan of parallel texts usually, but I think in the case of Japanese, especially if you're just getting started, they can be quite handy. And so here you've literally got the whole of uh, Maclean's escapades as spoken in the movie translation or with the movie dubbing uh, with the English on one side and the Japanese on the other side. And this helps me in two different ways. First of all, because it's a movie script, you've got very short bits of dialogue, which make the reading a lot easier. There's no kind of like massive narrative explanations of the kind of things that are usually difficult in, uh, in novels and things. Instead, it's like short, punchy dialogue. You've also got the English on the other side, which means you can kind of check the, you can check what you've read, you can set the scene, and screenplay books like this are just a brilliant way to, to get into reading. It is a good idea to make sure that you actually like the screenplay that you're about to read. It doesn't have to be die hard. I've got a bunch here, I've got like Notting Hill, that classic, Shawshank Redemption, you know, take your pick. Welcome back to the channel, guys. My name is Ollie Richards, and this channel is all about helping you learn a new language quickly using the power of story. Stories like uh, the Shawshank Redemption, what a story, so that you can become fluent faster and live your best life. And next up, number two, we have Yotsubato. Now, this is a manga book, and I'll be the first to acknowledge that not everyone is interested in manga, myself included. But let me tell you, manga can be an amazing introduction to reading in Japanese. And if you are uh, an early beginner, I can't think of a better manga book series than Yotsuba. Now, it's about a quirky young girl and her everyday adventures. Uh, she learns about the world around her and figures out how to solve her problems. This kid is very naive for her age and gets things wrong, which makes for some quite humorous stories, I'd say. It is highly accessible, both in its language and its word choice, with plenty of hiragana to help you out, and also 15 issues to collect. This is number two. Uh, and don't, don't be deceived by these seemingly childish topic. There's a lot of meat in here, and that's what makes Yotsuba one of the best manga for new readers to start with. Now, third up is one of my books, 30 Day Mastery. This one here is Amazing Adjectives and Adverbs. Now, this is, these books have actually been designed to teach spe uh, specific aspects of the language, like in this case, adjectives and adverbs. I have another book on kanji, but that's not really the point here. The reason that this is here uh, in a video about books to read in Japanese is that this series is based on um, on a 30 part story. And the idea is that you read one chapter every single day for 30 days and that helps you focus on the specific language point. But anyway, these stories have been written very carefully to be accessible for beginners. So one of the things I've also done with these stories is I've formatted them in a way that makes them really easy. I often don't like the way Japanese books are formatted, especially textbooks for an international audience. It's not very nice, but I've really formatted them here so that they are really accessible and easy to read for, for beginners. And what you'll get from this is a story that is just designed to give you a way into reading Japanese. It is a lot simpler than trying to read a novel, and there are aspects of it which, you know, if you are used to reading uh, regular, like authentic Japanese, you know, you might find it a little bit, um, a little bit basic. But nevertheless, if you're looking for a way into Japanese and you, you don't like the idea of manga, and you don't happen to be a, a Bruce Willis fan, or whatever, then this is a great way um, in, because you've got fiction, but it's written for that easy, uh, easier level and it's broken down into uh, into short chapters which can be uh, which can be much more easily uh, read. You know, a chapter here is literally one page. All the kanji comes with furigana so that you can you can uh, check the pronunciation of it. You've also got vocabulary lists here and um, even exercises, uh, comprehension questions and things like that just to help you process it. So it's a really good way in. But next up, number four, we have Shirokuma Cafe. Now it is almost impossible not to recommend Shirokuma Cafe or Polar Bear Cafe 
in English, on a list of the best books for Japanese learners. Imagine the type of easy, casual language that must be present in a manga about a polar bear who spends lazy days running his own cafe and chatting with his animal friends. He has a, a habit of making bad puns, which should be quite interesting for you um, as a Japanese learner. So this is an unexpected but completely charming manga that's very easy to get into in both, uh, you know, both story-wise and in terms of Japanese language skill. And for that reason, it is great uh, and accessible for early level uh, learners, but it's also great as a springboard for diving into more complex uh, Japanese texts later on. Just like this little beauty. Kami no kodomo tachi wa mina odoru. Now this literally translates as the children of God all dance, but in English it's, it's known uh, by another name, which is After the Quake. Now this is a book by a very esteemed author, Murakami, and it is one of the most important modern novels in Japan. So if you'd like to delve into Japanese culture, then this is indeed a good place to start. The book itself is a, is a mesmerizing collection of six stories, and it's set at the time of the catastrophic 1995 Kobe earthquake. Um, but the upheavals that afflict Murakami's characters are even deeper and more mysterious. What makes this an appealing book to attempt is that it has a widely available English translated version too. So if you examine the Japanese text and find that it's uh, too far out of reach for you right now, this is a great one for actually beginning with the English text so you can get a, the gist and the context uh, and then tackling the Japanese after that. And the fact that it's a collection of short stories means that it feels more achievable because like the, the end is in sight basically with each chapter, which means if you want to uh, obey rule number four of story learning, which is read it, then read it again, uh, then it just uh, makes it that little bit more achievable. Who doesn't love a bit of Murakami after all? Now, number six, one that you will undoubtedly recognize, Majo no Takubin. This is Kiki's delivery service. And if you enjoy watching anime, then you might already have heard of this. It's a, it's a Studio Ghibli adaptation of this, of this charming story, in which case you'll be glad to hear that it's remarkably simple to read. Now, this, I would say, is geared towards uh, N4 and N3 level learners on the Japanese, uh, on the JLPT. There's a combination of easy to understand words and dialogue spoken through the voice of a child. So you get um, a type of text that is nuanced but accessible. The story follows a 13-year-old half-witch called Kiki who goes off on her own to explore a new city with her wisecracking black cat Gigi as a, as a companion. It's an enchanting story about finding inner strength and it's, uh, it's pretty easy to digest as it has these little standalone chapters. But if you don't feel you're quite ready to tackle a full book just yet, then I have just the answer. Another equally famous book that you can also find in English, Kitchi. Sounds just like kitchen, doesn't it? And that's exactly what it is from uh, by Banana Yoshimoto, who's uh, a very famous name in the Japanese literary world. This one is a full length novel about a young woman who struggles to cope after her grandmother dies. She, she gradually gets close to one of her grandmother's friends from a flower shop and ends up staying with him and his transgender mother. It's an interesting story. Uh, although although there, there is the occasional complex vocabulary about grief and psychology, there's also, um, a lot of daily vocabulary that makes it very accessible. Um, but hey, you know, you could always start with the English version perhaps and then come back to the Japanese when you're ready. Great choice though. Now, if you read one of these books and you want to maximize the huge benefits you'll gain from reading, then I recommend you check out this video where I show you the right way to learn vocabulary from your reading. There's a very specific method I recommend to learn and memorize words from stories. And you know what? Your reading comprehension will go through the roof. So click the video over here right now and discover how it works.